Now my hi to my welcome to this new series of video podcasts brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce with me your host Hafsa Ahmed. As communities around the world attempt to navigate through these unprecedented times, we bring to you a novel video podcast series, Influencers at LU, where I will be asking the faculty experts questions about the most pressing topics facing the world today, hoping for insights to lead us through these unprecedented times. Today, I am joined by two special guests, the Dean of the Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce, Hugh Bixby, and Associate Dean Research of the Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce, Alan Wenwick. Welcome, Hugh and Alan, to our very first discussion of influencers at LU. I would like to start with my first question for Hugh as uh, Dean of the Faculty. So Hugh, there is no doubt the future of business will be different in the ongoing and post-COVID-19 world. What role do you see for the Faculty of Agribusiness in this different world, particularly for New Zealand? Thanks, Hafsa. Um, I guess one of the ways of of approaching this is to to start by talking about what is different about our faculty compared to other business schools around New Zealand and Australasia, and that we, we do focus on agribusiness as a context for business studies or explicitly Uh, have degree programs that are built around agribusiness, which links to New Zealand's main export drivers. And probably the things that have emerged as questions most widely when you look at global commentary, which as you follow around the world, it's food security, um, safety, uh, this heightened awareness of, of people and what they eat and how they live but as well global supply chains and and how we maintain food supply and things like pandemics and this whole modification of the way that people are doing business and and i guess the big question now is you know will it continue and and how much of a shift change has it has it been so when when we look at our faculty and and how we're positioned to do this uh all of those things that i just mentioned are what we do as a business school we're we're strongly linked everywhere from farms to forks, however you want to phrase it, uh, international, domestic, consumer behavior, supply chains, um, understanding how commerce works uh, across a wide variety of food chains linked with science um, as well as human behavior. Uh, So the idea is that the world is interdisciplinary. The work environments that we all work in are interdisciplinary and and we need to have people and students who understand how all that works and i think that will be the the main way that that our faculty can make a huge contribution to post covid 19 world right thank you hugh um and i think those comments really highlight to us that you know we we are we are all sort of uh, in you know interconnected and I really wanted to quote uh, a Fakatoki which says, Na tororu, na takororu, ka ora a te iwi. Well, you know, with your basket and my basket, the people will thrive. So th- that's the knowledge that we are looking for. So Alan, in terms of your role as um, the Associate Dean for Research, what role do you think the research and academics from the faculty will play in this um, recovery journey for us? Uh, thank you, Hafsa. Yeah, I think there's obviously a very key role um, for academics and researchers um, in this as society recovers um, from the COVID shock. But it's not only really helping as we recover, but this idea that we're going to be trying to reset the economy. And I think that's a very key thing which we can contribute to because many of the wicked problems that were facing us before COVID-19 came along are are still there. We've still got the challenges of the climate change. We've still got other environmental challenges, um, challenges of inequality, et cetera. So these haven't gone away. These are just as COVID's just added another level of complexity um, to it. So I think we have a key role in helping um, inform the discussion and debate that's going to go around how we respond to COVID-19, but still deal with those other challenges that we were grappling with before it came along. 
You know, we're spending a huge amount of money in New Zealand and globally uh, on, on the recovery. Um, we have a role to play ensuring in a way that this money is well spent and helping inform that debate. You know, I've heard people talk about the fact in the next 18 months, you know, we really have a chance now to think about how we can reset the economy going forward. I mean, agribusiness is key, but also in New Zealand, we talk a lot about what will happen with the aviation industry and tourism, the ones which we have um, sustainability challenges before. Um, so I think what we need to see and where we can really help is this issue is we're going to become, you know, we're going to need more innovation, more innovative behavior by our businesses. We're going to need more entrepreneurial activity. You know, people are going to have to shift the way they work, how we do things. And again, we can make, you know, significant contribution to that debate about how we will work in the future. And really, I think another thing that academics generally sometimes we think academics tend to work on their own a bit too much. But again, I think we need to think about different ways of working as well. And collaboration, I think, will be a key um, part of this. And Hugh's already mentioned this issue about interdisciplinary approaches. No one discipline is going to be able to help us um, solve these issues. We need to work across disciplines. We also need to collaborate with stakeholders right across the value chains that we work because again academics don't have a monopoly on knowledge the knowledge is out there all around us but we can help pull that together you know we can be honest brokers we have that role as the critics in society that we can take and then finally we also need to be having a very collaborative approach across institutions in New Zealand you know we shouldn't be competitive with other universities other research institutes I think we have a key role to play in collaborating across them. And this way, these, these different steps that we can take, we can help the economy recover, but we can also think about what we want the new economy to look like. Excellent. Thank you so much, Ellen, because you mentioned so much about collaboration and partnerships. What I really wanted our listeners or viewers to know was what is the expertise that resides in the faculty? So I'll, I'll start off with Hugh. So Hugh, can you just give us a, a, an overview of what, uh, what the expertise does in the faculty have uh, in terms of contributing towards this recovery that Alan and you are talking about? So, so broadly, our faculty looks like in any other business school in, in that we've, we've got um, researchers and, and academics who are across the, the, the full range of, of discipline areas that, that apply to business, marketing, accounting, finance, economics, business management, but um, as well, uh, we have special expertise in, I guess you call them applied areas. So around food, food marketing, um, farm management, uh, farm business management, uh, supply chain, uh, tourism, uh, property. So we have property degrees and people that are, are doing uh, specialist research around people and land in, in the property context. And so when, when we think about the, I guess, the broad uh, elements of, of what recovery is, is all about, which is everything to do with business and how people interact and, and uh, do things, we, we've got a depth of expertise that uh, applies to all of those broad areas. And, and I think the other part about it is we keep coming back to the interdisciplinarity the interdisciplinary nature of the problems is um, we're well connected and we have people that uh, are probably inherently interdisciplinary in, in their thinking and how they do things, uh, connecting across the university and, uh, and as Alan has, has mentioned, uh, you know, strong links to uh, industry. So people who work, come from industry, have worked in industry um, and are able to work closely there. But also given that um, our economy is highly globally linked, um, a lot of our uh, expertise on our campus is, is also globally connected. And so we've got collaborators um, around the world that uh, can help uh, uh, solve problems that, that are actually international in nature rather than just New Zealand in nature. Right. 
Thank you very much, uh, Hugh. And I think that brings us to the question now that I'd like to ask Ellen is because you are speaking on behalf of the researchers in your current role as Associate Dean Research. Could you share some specific topics uh, with, uh, re for researchers within this faculty who have expertise to contribute towards you know, the global interdisciplinary uh, scenario that we're dealing with? Um, yeah, thanks, Hafsa. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a range of expertise, as Hugh has highlighted, and I think it'd be useful now just to highlight um, some of the particular areas people are working with. So clearly one of the hardest hit sectors through this is tourism. And so we have expertise and people working in tourism. So we'll be thinking about, you know, what now for New Zealand with tourism and the question about adding value against you know, quantity versus quality. And that would be a key thing. But as I said, we also need to think about COVID um, response in light of the wider challenges that are facing us. And so we have expertise and people working in the faculty on the idea about what a bioeconomy would look like or this idea of a circular economy. We have a what we call an old bioeconomy in that we rely heavily on primary industries um, for our, our income. But can we turn that into what we call a new or modern bioeconomy where we can do that in a way that reduces our impact on our environment? So we have a lot of people thinking about what land use would look like and what systems would be in place to do that. And again, what we've noticed um, through the um, COVID-19 uh, crisis in a way is that our supply chains have been threatened. And again, we've got people working on resilience in supply chains. They've sort of taken their expertise that we got with the earthquakes um, of 2010 and 2011 to understand resilience. And again, there's other, other ways that we should be configuring our supply chains. Our model in New Zealand is very much exporting uh, our commodities and people adding value elsewhere. Should we be doing more onshoring and should our supply chains be configured differently? Another big challenge for us is the issue with um, labor in particularly in the agricultural and horticultural sector with the, uh, obviously the borders being closed, the challenges for migrant labor and things like that. So we have people whose research area is really understanding issues of migrant labor, but that has become more of a key issue now. And also we have sectors that may be declining and sectors that may be growing and agriculture may play more of an important role. So again, will people need retraining and how can we support retraining in these issues? And so, you know, we're going forward, we're thinking about this idea of higher value, thinking about higher value from tourism, but we can also think about higher value from our agricultural products. And we have people who are saying, can we play and work on our sort of um, New Zealand pure um, approach to add value more to our um, agricultural products so we can produce, I guess, less but a higher value in those challenges uh, there. But we also need to think about how we support the sectors and we want, we're going to need investment. Our traditional models investment going to work in the sort of financial issues that we have. Um, we have expertise in the idea of microfinance. This has been you know, mainly used in um, uh, developed, developing countries and things like that, but can it be a tool for us to think about how we might finance some of these changes? And I think Hugh really mentioned a key thing at the end about the international dimension of this. This clearly is not only a New Zealand issue. We have many countries who are less fortunate than New Zealand in terms of the extent of the hit they've taken, extent of their institutions, governance and wealth able to deal with it. And we have a lot of expertise working in developed country, developing countries. And we, I think, again, we have a role to play internationally in helping the recovery and resetting as well. We can't just focus on New Zealand. Thank you very much, Ellen. Uh, well, I think that highlights to us that there's certainly a lot the faculty experts have to offer as insights in leading us through these uncertain times, particularly through um, interdisciplinary approaches and partnerships and collaborative opportunities. So I would like to uh, thank both of you, both Hugh and Alan, for the time today and for joining me in this initial discussion about influencers at uh, LU. Uh, if you wish to connect with Hugh and Alan, uh, their details are available on Lincoln University's website under staff profiles, so you can email them or there's, they've also got their contact numbers there. 
As for me, I'll be bringing back more expert insights from the faculty with each episode of this series. To our viewers and listeners, thank you very much for joining us. We look forward to connecting with you. So if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please email me at hafsa.ahmad at lincoln.ac.nz or you can message me through LinkedIn. Before I conclude, I do want to emphasize that uh, the whole reason we are doing influences at LU is that we wanted to emphasize we are all in this together. He waka e kenoa. And we will emerge through this, through this together. Kakite ano. Goodbye and see you again.